It's been a while since Bamboo Lab released the new printer, so it's understandable that people were hyped for this printer. Now, it might not be what everyone was asking for, but it's still a very impressive machine. It comes in a few different variations. So first of all, you can get just the printer by itself. You can get the combo, which is the AMS2 with the printer, and then you can get it with a laser module and then a 40 watt laser module as well. Now today I'm gonna to be looking at the combo which comes with the AMS2 and I think this is gonna be the most popular edition. Now I know a lot of people kinda of just wanted a bigger version of the X1C and that is what this is plus more. You get the nice big build volume plus the addition of the dual nozzle tool head. And that's the feature I'm kinda of most excited for so let's get to opening this thing up. In this video we're gonna unbox it, take a look at some of its features and I'm gonna do a few test prints and then at the end kinda of give my final thoughts on it. So let's open it up and check out this printer. All right, so right on top we have a large accessory box. We can just take a look at this right now. Looks like a spool holder if you're not using the multicolor unit. Looks like a desiccant pack maybe and some extra tubes. We have a toolbox here which we will probably need to open up the printer. So we have our tools and it looks like it comes with an extra hot end as well. It comes with filament swatches. Of course we have the instructions which we will go through pretty thoroughly because I want to make sure I set this printer up right. This is a pretty nice printer and I don't want to do anything wrong with it. Lots of packaging in this one. It's not the heaviest box, even though it looks massive. A lot of that is packaging, which is important when you have a printer like this. So it does say on the top of the box that you should have two people to remove this out of the box. What we ended up doing was kind of tearing away one corner of the box and then having two people lift it out after we pulled away some of that cardboard. So if you're wondering how it just appeared up here, that's what we did. And then on top here, it looks like we have the glass lid. I'm just gonna take this off here, remove the cardboard. Just opens from the bottom like that and lifts out nicely. All right, so now I'm just gonna be removing the AMS, which is down in here. So let's start by removing some of this foam. And then there are four screws holding this in place that I have to remove in order to get this out. Indicated in red. Then there's also two down below. So with those screws removed, you can remove the plastic supports here. And I should be able to pull it out through the front. There we go. Now one of the benefits of the AMS2 Pro over the AMS1 is that this one is actively heated and can dry your filament. So now with that removed, you're going to remove four more screws indicated in red on the build plate. And then there's gonna be four more screws we're gonna remove that are holding the bed in place. And at this point, you can cut these zip ties and we're gonna pull this away so we can remove the foam behind it. And also on either side, there is a piece of foam here that you're supposed to remove. So now I'm gonna put the glass top back on because we're gonna put the AMS unit on top of it. And then packaged inside the AMS is the cables and tubes to connect it to the unit. Just remove a foam piece here. And <clears throat> and it looks like this is our power cord for the printer itself and then the cables to connect the printer to the AMS. So now I'm gonna connect the PTFE tube. So I'm gonna start by pushing it into the back of this unit. And then I'm gonna put it into the right extruder. I'll push it a good amount in. Then I'm gonna connect this cable. Just like that. And then to the printer. And then it says to remove the tape and the packaging of the desiccants. So I'm gonna do that now. 
So now we're gonna attach the external spool holder. It just clips on like this, and you'll attach the tube like that and into the left extruder here. So this spool will feed the left, the AMS unit will feed the right. Is that something we're gonna have to play around with and see what the best results are? And then the final step is this has some sort of safety key. I think that's just because this is a, you know, more engineering type printer. They want to make sure it's extra safe. So all you have to do is put that key in and it should work now. So first up, of course, I had to print a Benchy. That's just how it is, you know how it goes. And it printed very well, you know, it's something you would expect from a printer of this cost. It, it was really nice. I, I can't really complain about this at all. We've kind of reached peak Benchy at this point. So I won't talk about this one too long. Let's go on to a multicolor print, which is what a lot of people are interested about with this printer. So here is the first multicolor print I did. This is a prop from the Fallout TV show slash video game series. And it turned out really well. And so I'm gonna have to explain a bit how this double extruder system works to, in order for you to appreciate how this turned out. So, you know, you've done multicolor printing before, probably you've used the older AMS system and you know it produces a ton of waste. Now, you might expect a print like this with five different colors in it to produce a lot of waste, but on this machine, there was barely any. And that's because you can load up one filament on the left extruder and then the AMS on the right. Or in fact, if you have multiple AMS units, you could do an AMS on both. So the way I set this one up is I put the yellow on the left extruder and the AMS with the rest of the colors on the right. That is because there was the most color changes between yellow and the other filaments. So in this case, instead of switching the colors every single layer, it's just switched between the nozzles, which saved so much filament. The most waste was actually produced once I got past this yellow filament and hit the white and black. That is when I had to change every single layer. And then it got to the top layer, which is gray. So it really just had to do one more switch to finish off this print. But it is so nice to not waste, you know, twice the total amount of filament just to do multicolor prints. So I am really happy with this printer just based on that. That is the biggest feature that I was interested in and it really did a good job. And then another aspect I was interested in with this printer is printing different materials from the left to right nozzle. So in this case, I did PETG on the left nozzle and PLA on the right. And that was so I could do support material in PETG and the main model in PLA. And that is because PETG doesn't really stick to PLA. So you can use that for the support and it will come off super easy. So for this test, I had the support as entirely pet G, what you could also do, which would save even more time, even though it is pretty quick switching between the left and right, is just have that support interface, which is the part where it connects to the model, have that be pet G and the rest of the support be PLA. It would be a lot quicker, but I was really just trying to do some tests here, see the capabilities of this printer. So that's why I went with that. And then there are some situations where you might want to use the whole support as a different material. Maybe you have a very expensive filament that you want to use for the main model and then some cheap crappy filament for the support. That way you're not, you know, using your $100 per kilogram spool on supports, if that makes sense. And I gotta say, it did a really good job. The supports came off really easy. It was super easy to set this up in the software, you know, bamboo, the way they are. Everything is just really smooth and intuitive. For the multicolor prints, it still does need a prime tower, which is to get the nozzle set up for that next layer so you're not having little gaps in your model. So it does waste a little bit, but not nearly as much as doing the full multicolor on the old system, which uses one of these anyways, plus all that flushed out stuff from the back. So I kind of covered that main feature of this printer being the dual nozzle tool head, but there are some other little features here and there that are really nice to have as well. So first off, this one has a nice large bed. Obviously a lot of people were interested in that. This one is 350 by 320 by 325. Now a slight bit of that 
is not accessible on each end because of the way the dual nozzle setup is. You lose a little bit on each side, but it's still quite a big bed. Another nice feature is this big indicator bar across the front. It'll give you a bit of information about the print, such as the progress, which is nice because you can take a quick glance at it and know exactly where it is. It also has power loss recovery, which is a nice feature if you get frequent power outages. So I did test this one. Actually, I kind of put it to the limit of its test. I unplugged it before I went to bed and plugged it back in in the morning and it actually started up, knew exactly where the print was and I hit resume and it resumed. Now the problem is when you leave it off that long, obviously it's gonna cool down. You're gonna lose bed adhesion but it actually held on for quite a while when I restarted the print. The print stayed on, but the prime tower is actually what fell off. I didn't expect it to work at all, so that was kind of cool. So if you do lose power for maybe, you know, 20 minutes to even an hour, it might be okay. Maybe even longer, depending on testing. I don't know, but it's a really nice feature to have. It also has a heated chamber, which is really easy to control through the menu, and that is great for printing things like nylon, polycarbonate, things that tend to warp when it gets too cold. So that is a nice feature to have. It also adopted the easy change hot end that the A1 has. So compared to the older ones where you had to unscrew a whole bunch of things, undo some wires, this one's really easy to do. It just pops off and it is, it's just nice to have. One little feature, which is kind of nice, is the screen tilts up. So say if you had your printer down really low, you can have this pointed up or have it flat if you're at eye level. I also noticed that they switched to a linear rail system rather than the dual rods. And I guess that is to make it a little bit stronger. You have a really big head on this printer. I think they're just trying to make it a little more robust. One thing I noticed is the printer likes to bounce around a lot and it's because it's on these really thick anti-vibration feet. And I guess that helps with reducing those vibrations through the table. Next, I'm gonna talk a bit about the AMS-2. It, it looks pretty similar on the surface to the AMS-1, but there are a few key changes that make this one quite a bit nicer to have. So first up, it does have a filament dryer built in. The old one was really only good at keeping things dry for a while. It did not actually dry the filament. But this one does, and it actually has vents in it that vent out that moist air. So it's not just building up the humidity inside, it's actually ejecting that air out. And like the old system, you can use multiple AMS systems on here, up to four, plus multiple HT units on the side. And I think it goes up to 25 total colors you can have on the system, which is a lot. That is uh, more than I probably need, but if you want to do it, you can. I would actually like to see someone try that out, because I don't think I've seen anyone do it yet. Another nice feature is they've made it easier to maintain the system. If you look in here, you can see the tubes are exposed unlike the old one where you had to take a whole bunch of things apart to get to. And if you've ever had a filament jam in there, you know how much of a pain that can be. And another nice feature, which is actually in the slicer, they will tell you how to best optimize your filament. So it will tell you which would be the best filament to put on the side and which would be the best to put in the AMS to give you the least amount of waste total. If you're new to 3D printing, the H2D is really easy to use, much like Bamboo Lab's other offerings. But if you're a little more experienced, there's a lot of neat features to discover on this printer, which will keep you busy forever. So overall, definitely a great printer and a good addition to the Bamboo Lab lineup. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.